Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to our Christmas Eve service here at Southside Bible Church. We're glad that you're with us to celebrate such a glorious truth that God came into the world, which He created. This is what's called the incarnation of Jesus Christ, that He was fully God and fully man incarnated into a baby to come and to bring about salvation. And so what I would like to do tonight is I want to help you understand then why did Jesus come into this world? It's such a significant thing that happened in Bethlehem almost 2,000 years ago, and yet many in our land don't understand the importance of such a great event. We sing Christmas songs about it, and the glory of what happened this day, it's just never broken in. And so that is my heart this evening, is to share with you why Jesus would leave heaven and come to earth and I just want to tell you this, it's got to be big. The, the creator of the universe to enter into the, to his creation, there's got to be big why he would come do that. And so I thought, who would be better to answer this question than Jesus? And so I'm going to let him do that from a sermon that he preached in John chapter 6, if you want to turn there, if you have it on your phone or, or a Bible. This is what's called the bread of life discourse could be one of my favorite sermons that Jesus taught. And it's just beautiful that he, he tells us he didn't come into the world to give bread, but he came into this world to be bread, to be life, to be satisfaction, to be nourishment. And I want to try to unpack what does that mean? He came to satisfy our souls with what we have been looking for all of our days. Jesus has come to be bread for us. And just straight out, he tells us three times in this passage, his bread gives eternal life. Eternal life. Your, your, your life that will live forever. We're all going to die. And he's saying, I have bread that's going to give you life that will never end. Do you know that there are people spending billions of dollars a year just to have a longer life? You can spend all that money and live five more years, maybe, and what's being offered to you here is eternal life. This passage is about this life. There are two Greek words for life. One is bios, and it means a physical life. Another one is zoe, and this one means a quality of life. And that's the word in our text tonight. Jesus is offering you zoe. He is offering to you eternal life, abundant life, Life with him, the, the most amazing life. I heard kind of a funny illustration this week. There was a dad. He's flying with his seven-year-old son, and it was their, his first flight, his son's first flight. And he's amazed that these stewardesses keep coming and giving him soda pop. <laughs> he thinks this is great. And he kicks his feet up, and he's sipping his Dr. Pepper, and he goes, Dad, this is living. And that is Zoe, he, that little boy saying, this is life. This is the quality of life. And so Jesus tells us in our passage that the bread that he's offering gives Zoe eternal life, and it begins when you eat it by faith, and it will carry you through judgment. Jesus says there's going to be a judgment at the end of your life with you and God and the way you lived your life, and this bread will bring you through judgment, and it will give you life abundant with God forever and ever and ever, the deepest quality of life that you could ever have, shalom, well, peace, all's good. That's what he's offering to us. Be overwhelmed tonight what Jesus is giving to you. And so I want you to get excited about what he's offering. Nothing under your tree, on your table, or in your mug will ever compare to this. I have the gift of all gifts for you tonight. And as we begin, I want you to ponder something with me because I've done it all week. I laughed at that seven-year-old's view of what living is. It struck me as funny. But I think God laughs at us for what we think living is. What do you think it is? Maybe just Christmas Eve night, sitting here with a bunch of people. What is, what is Zoe to you? We've kind of been taught it's, it's to have a bank account that can retire. It's, I'm a foodie. I, if I can get the right foods, man, that's life. I, I've, I've spent my whole life saving. 
if I get a house, that's living. I just want to be a, a, applauded in my business work. I want to be respected. I want to be beautiful, popular, accepted, have great vacations. The commercials always say, this is the good life. And everyone's running around for what they think life is going to be, and it's no bigger than the Dr. Pepper on an airplane. The whole world is trying to sell you a lie about what life is, and this old preacher tonight is going to just rip that out and ask you what really is life. Examine just what you think life is. Stop. Ponder. Don't get to the end of life without knowing what life is. And what we think life is, is not life at all. That bread will spoil. It will not give you eternal life. It won't give you Zoe. It will not satisfy. You're going to need more and more. And it's an exhausting pursuit. And you just keep thinking, this bread's going to make me happy. No, it didn't. So what is life to you? I'm praying tonight. It must be the bread that Jesus is offering to us here in John 6. And I'm just going to cheat and jump to John 6.35 and just read it to you. This is, this is the peak of the whole passage. Jesus said to these people, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. I want to try to understand what that means because that sounds beautiful to me. It's been my life pursuit to get this and to eat this bread. And I want us to all eat it. If I could give you a Christmas meal, I want to do it with all of you tonight. Let's eat this bread. The other is just going to leave you with acid reflux and a voracious appetite in the morning. It happens every Christmas. The next day after Christmas, I wake up hungrier than I've ever been my whole life. Stretched and, and like, boy, that was really special. And if I could use the words, not satisfied. So of what I'm offering to you tonight, you eat this bread and Jesus says, you're never going to hunger again. There's something that he's offering that your soul keeps longing for and it stays hungry and it never gets fulfilled. And Jesus says, this bread is going to satisfy your soul. So let's understand it. Because if we eat earthly bread, all we're going to do is hunger again. And so as we begin, I want to just set a little context that's important. If I would have known they were singing that song, we could have skipped this part because they preached exactly what I want to set for the context. Um, Mary has had an angel come, and she now has a holy embryo placed inside of her by the Holy Spirit. This little embryo is fully God and fully man, and unbelievable what she's carrying. And, and as she moves along in her pregnancy, a census is called when Quirinius was governor and Joseph and Mary have to go back to Bethlehem to register. And as they get there, the place is packed. There's no rooms available. And Mary's about to give birth. And, and so they're, they're given a stable to stay in. And that's an animal barn. And so the king of the world, its creator, is born into a barn. Let earth receive her king. And he's wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's placed in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals. What's lying in that manger, though, is the key. And that is why the angels of heaven are singing about it. And the Son of God has come into the world. What an infinite plunge. And in John 6, he tells us why I came in. Because I'm the bread of life. You eat this bread and you're going to live forever. And what's beautiful is the word Bethlehem means the house of bread. What was lying in this feeding trough in the house of bread was the bread of life that if you eat it, you have eternal life. That's what's going on in Bethlehem. Let's eat. Turn with me to John 6, 2. We're going to dig in. A large crowd followed Jesus. Why? Because they saw the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. He's just curing and healing people with lifetime sicknesses and illnesses. And so they're watching saying, there's something powerful. This, this isn't normal. This, this is something divine going on. And then in, in this, these verses 1 through 14, Jesus said there's 5,000 men and, and women and children, so there's more. And Jesus says, have them sit down so we can feed them. And they're like, we don't have anything to feed them. And the one guy, I don't know if he's being sarcastic, he goes, well, there's this little lad here with five barley loaves and two fish, but that could never feed 
all these people. And Jesus does a miracle and he feeds them all. And there's 12 apostles and they all go gather a big basket full of leftovers. And then the disciples depart and they're, they're rowing and it says three or four miles, I think it was, and they, they're getting nowhere because of the storm. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes walking across the water. And he gets in the boat and it says, and they were instantly there. Now look at verse 22. The next day, in the Greek, this is a definite article, the crowd. So it's the crowd that saw all these miracles. They, they know that he, he might have walked on water. Uh, the, the feeding of the 5,000, that crowd that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other small boat there except one and that Jesus had not entered with his disciples. So I just want you to see the crowd that we're going to look at in this dialogue is the one that has been watching all these miracles. And so they're seeking after Jesus. Now come with me to verse 25. <coughs> they find Jesus. And on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, when did you get here? And Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, which is why you should be seeking me because you know I'm God. You should be seeking me because of what you've seen. But you know what? You're not seeking me for the right reasons. You're coming after me because you ate of the loaves and were filled. You're coming after me to get your bellies filled. filled. So don't work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father God has set his seal. And so my question to you tonight, isn't it good that they're seeking Jesus? I mean, isn't that a good thing? We live in a day and age where whole churches are built on these kind of people, trying to get these kind of seekers into our churches. Isn't that what Jesus wants? No. No. Many of these seekers are going to go away at the end of this passage because what Jesus said was too hard for them. They're going to walk away. He wanted them to seek him for the right thing. And the only thing that could give them eternal life was him. Come for the right thing. Jesus isn't happy just that you're seeking. He wants you to seek the right thing and he wants to give you life Zoe, in abundance tonight. So what is wrong? Well, Jesus says they're doing it from wrong motives. You just want your bellies filled. They want what Jesus can give them for their temporal needs. They're thinking temporal. And there are whole religions based on this. It's called health, wealth, and prosperity that Jesus came to just make you happy, full, and, and just the abundant life on this earth. And Jesus came to give you bread that perishes, he says. He says that perishes. That isn't what he's offering to you tonight. There's something way better. There's something so much better than bread for your belly tonight. See, they want the product from Jesus. They want more bread, but they don't want the person. And, and they missed it. Look, look at John 5.36. But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John for the works which the Father has given me to accomplish, says Jesus. The very works that I do testify about me that the Father has sent me. And so my works prove that I'm God. And you should be seeking me for the right reasons, not to get your bellies full. This is, this is God. And he's manifesting it in their midst of doing things that no human could do. And they're saying, can you give me some bread to eat? And it happens in the church every Sunday. When this bread is lifted up, I just want something temporal to eat. Jesus says in verse 27, do not work for the food which perishes. Don't make your life about the temporal. Don't spend all of your days on the temporalness of this life trying to make it comfortable. Spend all your days working and accumulating and it all perishes. The, that famous saying in the church, have you ever seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul? It will perish. Why would you give your life to the temporal? You're going to leave it all behind. And Jesus is saying, that food spoils. But what I'm going to give you is eternal life that will never spoil. Don't use Jesus 
for that. Are you here tonight seeking the wrong thing from Jesus? Maybe your whole life you've been seeking the wrong thing from Jesus. There are going to be many tomorrow who will celebrate Christmas for the wrong reason. He wants you to eat this bread that gives Zoe this everlasting life, this quality of life with your soul fully satisfied in Christ. Every longing filled in him. That's why he came to the earth he created. And so what I want to do with a little bit of time that we got left is to help us understand then about this bread. And I just want to look at six aspects of the bread. And by the time we're done, I hope that you'll understand what is the bread that Jesus is offering. So begin with me in verse 28. <clears throat> Therefore they say to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? So what do we got to do to work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. And they said to him, what then do you do for a sign so that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? How about feeding 5,000 with a couple of loaves? How about walking on water? How about healing all these people? And they're still saying, what signs do you do? You know what they're wanting? Bread. Bread. Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. Here they go. And as it's written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. So just, they, they gave them bread. Why don't you give us some? And Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it's not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it's my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven uh, and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. And so what I want you to see is this bread is to be believed upon. It's to be received. It's to be eaten, so to speak. Christ comes and offers himself to us. In John 6, seven times Christ says the origin of this bread is from heaven. The bread came from heaven. It's from heaven's pantry. The Son of God came. And I want you to hear this. Nothing from earth's pantry could have helped us. So God had to leave heaven and come to save us. And so all this human righteousness, our, our whole world is built on, I, I got to do things, I got to accomplish things, I got to get God's favor, I got to get my approval of my boss, my spouse. There's just everything is about this works righteousness. And you can try to do religion and all these things. And some of you might be sitting in that hamster wheel tonight and it will never give Zoe. It'll never give abundant life. It'll just wear you out and tire you and ground you. And here's the loaf of life. And he's saying, I need to be received. I need to be believed upon. I've come into this world to give you life. In verse 29, Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom God has sent. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's the work that I must do to have this eternal life? It's to believe in Jesus whom God has sent. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. This must be believed. It must be eaten to give you life, this quality, abundant, eternal life. And I've always said, man will do anything to have this except nothing. And God's asking you to hold out an empty hand and to receive the bread of life as Jesus has come and done the work of salvation. Second, it's to be received as living Bread. He says that in verse 33, 35, and 51. He comes to give life to those who are dead in their trespasses and sins. We enter into this world spiritual stillborns. And he comes and he gives life to our souls. And he says this to people who are living and breathing. Do you know that you can be walking dead with, with no taste buds for Jesus? You have no spiritual taste buds for Christ. And, and you're walking around. He says you're spiritually dead. You're not alive to God in Christ Jesus. And he says, I've come to give you eternal life. I've come to give you life from the dead to satisfy your soul and have you live forever. In verse 50, this is the bread which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I'm the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. 
And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I will be crucified. I will die. And this body will give eternal life. This bread will take you beyond death. When you die, you'll never be more alive than you've ever been. John, and John, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection of life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. I've come to give you life. When you die, you're going to be made alive forever. Zoe, the best quality life is being offered to you this night. Without this bread, you will die. And you will suffer a second death for all of eternity. Jesus is saying, don't come to me for physical bread. I'm the bread of life. This is what was lying in a manger. This is the glory of the incarnation. Verse 33, he says, I'll give life to the world. The manna that came to Israel, they, they ate it and they died. But this bread is for the world. And if you will come and take it, I offer you to myself. And in verse 37, Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will never cast out. And in verse 39, this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he's given me, I lose nothing but raise it up on the last day. I'll give life. Third, it's satisfying bread. Look at me in verse 35. I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. He will fill all these longings and desires. No soul will come in their need to be saved, to have their sins forgiven, and be right with God that won't walk away completely satisfied. You come, I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. I'm condemned. He says, come to me and you will find salvation. I will give you Zoe. Isaiah 55, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money on that which is not bread and your wages for that which won't satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Come eat the bread of life and I will satisfy your soul and your longings. Jesus has come to fill that. The things of this world will never satisfy and I know every one of you will testify to that. It won't, it won't work. I've tried. I've tried everything. I got a Christmas card once that said, if our greatest need was for technology, God would have sent a scientist into that manger. If our greatest need was money, he would have sent an economist. If our greatest need was to be educated, he would have sent a teacher. But since our greatest need was forgiveness of sins, he sent a savior into this world. You need to be forgiven of your sins and have peace with God. And this bread will give that. And I don't care how many presents you get, and how great they are, they will not satisfy. They won't give you Zoe. Have you found this to be true yet? Too many die before they get this figured out. That's why I want you to eat with me tonight. Christ is satisfying. He's the bread of life. To eat him is to be satisfied in him. To believe all that God is for you in Christ, your father, adopted, forgiven, loved, accepted, all that God is for us in Christ. Receive him this night. Trust him for his work for salvation. Love him. Find your all in all in him. Cherish this Christ. Eat him. Eat this Christ. And fourth, it's complete bread. You don't need any other nutritional aids, no vitamins or supplements. Jesus said, hence, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. When Jesus hung on that cross and he accomplished salvation, he said, Tetelestai, it's finished. I've done everything necessary for your salvation. There's nothing more that you got to bring for what he is offering in this free salvation. So he is bread if you're young. He's bread if you're old. If you're educated or uneducated, rich or poor, moral or immoral, Jesus is a, a complete Savior for every complete sinner this evening. Fifth, it's a sacrificial bread in verse 51. 
I'm the living bread that came out down out of heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he'll live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is crucified bread. This bread went up on a cross and it was nailed to a tree. And Jesus said, my body is going to be offered in a sacrifice for your sins. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin on our behalf. And on that cross, our sins are put upon him and the Father punishes him for what our sins deserved. This baby would be nailed to a tree to take the arrows of God's wrath. Romans 8 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. I want you to hear this. There's only one way to get God's wrath off of you for sin tonight. There's only one way, and it's not through being a good person. He's going to pour it out. And he's either going to pour it out in hell forever or he's going to pour it out upon his son on that cross. But there's no other way to get wrath off than to have it poured out. To, to just sit and say, I got my own ideas is not a good idea. You got to get this off. And Jesus stood in your place and he bore the wrath of God undiluted. Our pardon is found by him bearing our sins in his own body on a tree. Isaiah said, by his wounds we're healed. And so I want you to hear this. He's crushed bread. He's a bloodied loaf. He's despised bread. He was judged so that you could have full acceptance with God. He was loaded up with the guilt of all your sins so that tonight you could be not guilty. He went into death itself so that the death would have no more sting. The grave now, is, is, it's got a fragrant aroma for the believer because Jesus conquered death and he can give eternal life. Jesus got justice for your sins on the cross, so now God can give you mercy for every sin that you've ever committed. This bread was bloodied for your forgiveness of sin. That's why this baby came to earth. The Hebrews said he took on a body so it could be pierced through for our transgressions. Those little hands, those little baby hands, I was looking at my little granddaughter as I walked in, those little hands were going to be nailed to a tree. And those little feet were going to be pierced and his side was going to have a sword go through it. The loaf would be broken so that you could have life. What good is bread unless it's broken? And sixthly, in verse 27, the father has put his seal on this bread. And 27, do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. And listen to this. For on him, Jesus, the Father God, has set his seal. And a seal was this kind of authentication uh, to, to seal, to show that you are the king, you're authentic, you're the real deal. And it is what God has chosen to save us from our sins. He, he stamped them. Uh, he's, he's, an angel appeared to Joseph and said, name him Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Okay? So God set his seal on Jesus. And he sent him into this world by a miraculous birth by the Holy Spirit into a virgin's womb. And then he came and he lived a spotless life in your place. He fulfilled the law. He perfectly loved and lived the way that God requires his children to live. He lived it in our place. And then he goes up on a cross for every sin that we've ever committed. And he dies and he takes the punishment of God. He's buried. On the third day, he's raised again because God says, it's finished. He accomplished salvation and he stamps it to say, in this one you can find salvation from your sins. The great saving work of God was complete. God set his seal on his son that there is no other name under heaven by which a man can be saved. He is the only one who can give eternal life. And God put his seal upon his son so you could have absolute certainty this evening. And I got confused. I said six. There's one more. Sorry. Okay, I felt if I said seven, you might have left early. So, <clears throat> in verse 28, I, I just, my last point is this bread is free. I want you to hear this. This is the best news you could hear. In verse 28, I, I'd pay anything for this bread. If God said to walk to New York on your hands, I'd do it. Therefore, they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? What can I do to have this salvation? 
And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him, Jesus, whom he has sent. What work must we do to receive this bread? Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him this night. God offers this bread. Receive it by faith. Repent of your sins and living a life against God and trying to be God and dictating your own life. Tonight, he's calling you to turn from this life of rebellion against God and to turn to his son in faith and receive and believe in the one who can save you from all your sin. He doesn't say gather up all your money, all your merit, all your goodness, and come exchange it for bread. It's free. The bakery of God is open. Come, eat the bread of life and satisfy your soul in him, and you'll have Zoe. You'll have the abundant quality life, eternal life with God. I'm going to close in verse 32. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it's not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it's my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. And so God's offer, he says he gives it to you. And I want you to hear this. It's in the present tense. He's giving it again and again and again for you. It's an offer from God tonight. Here it's being offered by God. Will you eat this bread and have life? And verse 33 says it's offered to the whole world freely to believe the work of God in Jesus Christ, to find salvation in him alone. What will you do with this bread that came down from heaven? How many people are going to die around religion having never eaten the bread of life, believed upon him or received him in your heart? How many will spend their days laboring for the bread that will perish? This is my, it breaks my heart as a pastor. You're on that hamster wheel and you work and you work and you work and all your achievements and all your accomplishments and everything you're trying to get will perish. Why will you die when Jesus is offering you eternal, abundant life? I read a while back of a man who died from hunger with a loaf of bread in his hands. Will you do the same this night? Tonight, the bread of heaven has been put before you. Will you eat it? Will you receive Christ? Trust him for your salvation and love him that he would do this and treasure this Christ over anything else. Come to the bakery and sit at the banquet table called Jesus this night and let him fill all the longings that have been ravaging your soul and hurting your life. What you've been looking for is Jesus. And he invites you into a personal relationship tonight to come and feed and eat upon this sweet Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful sermon that Jesus preached to these people on that day. And I thank you for the bread that came down out of heaven and came to give us Zoe. And he has come to give us eternal, abundant, beautiful life. God, because he was bloodied for our transgressions. And the work of God is to hold out an empty hand and receive the gift of God. We don't pay for this gift. It's an insult. We just come, poor in spirit, empty, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. And we find this abundant, beautiful life that you have sent your son into this world to give to all who will receive and believe upon his name. God bless every soul. Let us all eat of this table tonight. Let no one go home hungry. God bless. Pour out your spirit. Do more than we could hope or think in our midst. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.